Good evening, Constant Reader. Tonight, we continue our history of Jerusalem's lot. In our previous installment, we covered the origins of this mysterious village, leading up to the late 18th century, in which a cult leader named James Boone somehow engineered the disappearance of the entire population. And if things seem bad in the 1700s, Rest assured, constant reader, the next century gets even worse. After the disappearance of the entire town, Robert Boone fled south to Massachusetts, leaving behind his diary written in code. Later, Philip's adult son, Randolph Boone, inherited Chapelwaite Manor, which by that time the residents of Preacher's Corners believed to be cursed. And they believe the curse extended to the Boone family itself. Servants and townsfolk agreed, no Boone would find peace in Chapelwaite. Blood called out to blood. By 1816, Randolph's wife disappeared, leaving behind her husband and two young children, Stephen and Marcella. Some years later, when Marcella was a young woman, there was a terrible accident in the cellar. Apparently, Marcella tripped and fell down the stairs, breaking her neck though some believe she was pushed. Perhaps shocked by this sudden tragedy, or perhaps because he felt responsible for her death, Marcello's father hanged himself over the body of his deceased daughter. At least that's one theory. Another tale, told back and forth among the cleaning ladies in the town square of Preacher's Corners, is that they were victims of an insane yet seductive evil that lurked within the very walls of the manor. We do know from family testimony that after Stephen Boone became the sole owner of Chapelwaite, he never removed the noose that strangled his father. The rope remained dangling in the cellar for decades. Now master of the manor, Stephen Boone lived a solitary life. Although he was considered kind by his few servants, he was reclusive and spent much of his time and money collecting strange and ornate furniture with bizarre decorative flourishes and elaborate Greek garden statuaries that were simply covered up by the wilderness. It is possible that Stephen, like his forefathers, became obsessed with his family's past Meanwhile, Stephen's cousin, Charles Boone, was living in Massachusetts, experiencing his own hardship. In 1848, Charles's wife passed away, and he nearly lost his own life while suffering from brain fever. A year and a half later, still in recovery, Charles received the sad news that Stephen had died from a fall off of the porch of Chapelwaite Manor. Now Charles was the sole heir, the only known member of the Boone family, and now the new owner of Chapelwaite. In the fall of 1850, Charles Boone moved in, assisted by his loyal servant, Calvin McCann. In less than a month, both men would be dead. The authorities believe that Charles's brain fever returned and his resulting insanity led to murder and then suicide. However, there are letters written by Charles Boone that paint a very different and far more disturbing picture. Charles's correspondence with his friend Everett Bones Granson begins with his arrival at Chapelwaite on October 2nd, 1850. The first letter is cheerful in tone, though Charles does point out that his late cousin's decor of Chapelwaite is not to his taste. In subsequent letters, however, it becomes clear that Chapelwaite is a malevolent house. 
There are noises from behind the walls, which could be written off as a rat infestation, and yet there is not a single rat dropping to be found. Upon searching the house, Calvin discovered a secret compartment in a bookshelf in which they found an old map of the abandoned town of Jerusalem's lot. Inspired by a sense of mystery and adventure, the two men journeyed into the woods to find this town. All of the buildings were still standing, just as they had been the day its residents disappeared in the 1700s. According to his letter to Bones, Charles and Calvin entered the church and were horrified to find demonic tapestries, an upside-down cross, and upon the altar the infamous book, The Mysteries of the Worm. The two men departed, feeling ill at ease, and eventually Charles tries to investigate further by asking his cleaning lady more about the mysterious town. He is told that he should leave Chapelwaite immediately. Ultimately, however, Charles was consumed by curiosity and a moral obligation to end whatever evil might be connected to his family tree. According to his letters, he discovered a cryptic diary of Robert Boone, which uncovered the town's cultish history. Days later, in the cellar, he and Calvin encountered a ghoulish apparition of his dead uncle and his cousin Marcella. According to this account, the two men witness a wall opening up to reveal a hellish landscape, and on top of all of these nightmarish visions, Charles takes ill and feels too weak to leave the manor. In his final correspondence, Charles becomes determined to travel once again to the abandoned church in Jerusalem's lot and burn the evil book. According to the letter, Calvin joined him, and both men are shocked to discover that someone else, or something else, has been inside the church. They discovered the decapitated head of a lamb placed on the altar, its blood glazing the pages of the book. If the writing of Charles Boone is to be believed, what follows next is a moment of pure cosmic horror. The floor broke open, spilling into an abyss, from out of which came the oozing rings of a gigantic worm. The flesh of that monstrous worm struck Calvin McCann, throwing him across the room and snapping the poor man's neck. He died instantly. Charles managed to light a match and burn the book, then, and only then, the gargantuan creature shriveled back into its pit. Again, authorities believe that none of these events took place except in the mind of Charles Boone. Eventually, the body of Calvin McCain was discovered. However, there was no hole in the floor of the church, no damage to the floorboards, no sign of a monstrous beast. In the end, Charles Boone fled the scene, claiming to have glimpsed the undead corpse of James Boone crawling toward him, ready to drag him into darkness. To many who have studied the letters of Chapelwaite, Charles's last paragraphs to his friend serve as a final farewell and a suicide note. After returning to Chapelwaite, Charles decided that because he is the last surviving boon, he must end the curse of Jerusalem's lot by ending his own life. And after setting down his pen and paper, Charles flung himself off a cliff and into the sea. However, his sacrifice may have been in vain, for, believe it or not, unfortunate events continued to occur within the vicinity of Jerusalem's lot. In fact, Charles Boone was not the last member of his family. That honor belonged to James Robert Boone, who, on October 2nd of 1971, took up residence in his ancestral home of Chapelwaite. 
It should be noted, constant reader, that he did not stay long. Thank you for watching and listening to the Stephen King Book Club. For more information about Jerusalem's Lot, consult Stephen King's collection of short stories, Night Shift. <laughs>